So the last speaker of this session is Dr. Debojit Cha. He's from the Jindal School of Government and Public Policy in OP Jindal Global University. And he's going to talk on state of growth of Indian states. Uh, good afternoon. So uh, I'm, uh, I'm going to uh, talk on the state of growth of, uh, growth of Indian states. And, uh, and uh, you know that uh, 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 this, the disparity between growth rates or the, or the level of per capita income between different countries, it is, a, it is, a, it is one of the oldest problem of, uh, of economics, right? And, uh, and uh, there was many attempts to, uh, to think that how to solve that and, uh, and it is continually this kind of attempts have been made. So Solo in 1956 have given a model which the prediction of which says that the rich countries or the regions will eventually converge to the poorer regions due to diminishing returns of capital. But when empirically this kind of things has been tested, so uh, that kind of uh, this convergence remains elusive and, uh, and in most of the empirical studies we never found convergence. But instead what we found that the growth of the countries, especially in the underdeveloped part or under underdeveloped countries, that uh, it, is, it was extremely uneven. Uh, Dibbenduda in the last lecture was show, showing some of the graphs of GDP per capita of some of the developing, uh, developed countries and it was pretty stable, but, but it, especially in case of underdeveloped countries, I'll show you that the most of the growth or the or the or the path of per capita income is uneven and the growth is happening very unevenly right so uh, so first we need to understand why these uh, 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 why this it is uh, why it is important to understand the uneven growth first of all it creates difference in living standards so we can observe, uh, we can have polar, uh, much more increase in but uh, inequality, polarization, fractionalization in terms of per capita income, this is one. The second is it creates social tension, right? So when, say, say for example, in uh, uh, some uh, years back, we have seen in case of India that the people uh, from northern uh, India who have migrated to the Mumbai and some of, the, uh, some of these uh, regions have been, have been beaten up and, uh, and this kind of incident. Similarly, people from northeast uh, have, have a similar kind of position in different uh, Indian, uh, uh, very rich Indian cities, right? So this kind of social tension when people are migrating from the poorer regions to the richer, uh, richer regions, these kind of things are happening. So, and thirdly, it is detrimental to the federal structure of a country. Say, uh, we have, again, we have seen some of the examples that when uh, Tamil Nadu and Gujarat was, was, uh, was saying that we uh, will not implement GST in our state or even will not share, we are, we are, we are, contributing to the, uh, to the largest share of GST uh, or tax in the country, so we are, we are not going to participate in GST. So it is a threat to the federal structure uh, of the country as well. So, uh, so the first kind of unevenness that we can observe in, in uh, uh, yeah, these, are the, these are graphs that I have, uh, I have made uh, from, uh, these are the Indian states, GDP per capita path, and we can see a different kind of dynamic. Say, in the, in the first cup, there is crisscrossing, leapfrogging, all these things, and in the second diagram, we can see a, a kind of, uh, we can say, there's a convergence kind of thing is happening, but again, another one has started from the same position, but, but again, going, uh, uh, diverging from that. Similarly, here as well, they have started, the states have started with a similar per capita income, but after a certain time, they are diverging. So this kind of extremely different kind of growth dynamics can be observed. And, and the first kind of attempt that I have made earlier that we tried to model that, right? So uh, in one of my earlier, earlier papers this is the result of the distribution dynamics approach that I have used. And the result of that kind of dynamics is basically the, the polarization kind of thing that is happening here. Where the, uh, here we studied the evolution of a distribution between different two, uh, two different points of time and how the entire distribution has evolved from one part to another part. And the end result is two, uh, two poles are forming. So the, uh, the growth of the, or the, or, the, uh, or the per capita income of the states are 
are making two different ports, so it is becoming polarized. Similarly, uh, in, uh, here, from here it is much more clear that these are the kernel density plots of GD, GSDP per capita income uh, of uh, Indian states. And we can see in the, in the 1970s there was two poles, but these poles were closer. But in the, in the uh, uh, 2007 and 12 period, these poles have, have uh, departed from each other, right? So there was a divergence kind of thing between, between the poles, but at the same time, some polarization was happening. Uh, <coughs> so the second kind of unevenness, this is also important to understand, and recently, uh, Lan Pritchett and many other people have, and even I think Donny Rodrigue and Lan Pritchett in, uh, in their 1997 paper as well, they have pointed out that the, especially for the underdeveloped countries or the regions of the underdeveloped countries, growth, growth is very uneven, and this unevenness is different from the earlier unevenness which was happening in the cross-section. So, say again, uh, one, one country or one region for initially growing fast, and then it suddenly lose the momentum and then uh, a decline has started. So this is a different kind of unevenness so, uh, uh, that, that is happening. So here we have, uh, I have tried to plot uh, some of the Indian states. So in case of Rajasthan, you can say there, uh, see there is a clearly steadily increasing path. In case of Asham, initially there was a slow growing, but initially there was a growth acceleration. In case of Mahal, uh, Meghalaya, there is a clear declaration of growth after 2011. And in case of Bihar, and this is very interesting, we know th uh, these incidents after Nitish Kumar came uh, to the government, then initially there was a very rapid uh, increase in the GDP per capita income, but after certain time, after 11, 12, that uh, momentum has lost. So, in this paper, I tried to uh, uh, try to think uh, that implement whether these two kind of growth dynamics can be captured or unevenness can be captured together in uh, in one place, and whether that can give a certain kind of new insight about the growth path. So the research question that I uh, I'm considering here is: It possible to identify both kind of unevenness in the growth path of Indian states in the post-reform period? Then what are the uh, what are the roles played by initial post-reform average growth rate? Then upbreaks or down but downbreaks. These upbreaks are growth accelerations, and downbreaks are growth declaration in determining club convergence or uh, uh, club membership. And which kind of policy conclusion we can get from that? So we have actually applied three different methods to capture that initially to to identify the multiple growth clubs or, or, uh, or whether uh, to test especially whether there is a single convergence or a multiple, in multiple places these growth, uh, growth, uh, uh, growth paths are converging. What we have done, we applied this Philips Sewell method and uh, the, in, in, uh, to identify the growth breaks, the second kind of unevenness that we have applied biperon structural break test. This biperon structural break, uh, break test is a two-step method. In the first step, we identify the maximum number of possible breaks, breaks and in the second step, we, we, we try to test whether those breaks are significant or not, right? And in the, finally, we applied our ordered probit regression, where, where in, in the left-hand side, we have taken our ordered variable, this uh, or, or, or a categorical variable, and the categories are the basically the number of uh, clubs that has been identified in the first state uh, using this Philips Sewell method, and the right hand side variables are coming from the uh, this biperon test, right? So, so this is the result of the uh, the Philips Sewell test, and we we found interestingly there are five different clubs. Earlier we was uh, Till 2012, we were finding two clubs. So, but in, uh, when we extended the data till 2016, we found six, uh, five different clubs. And then again, we tried to merge the clubs whether there is a po any possibility that any two uh, nearby clubs can be merged. But uh, we found that no, there is no possibility. So, and uh, for example, in case of Club Five, you can f uh, you can find Delhi, Gujarat, uh, Gujarat, Chandigarh. Haryana, Shikim, all these states are there, similarly for others. And, uh, and the, the advantage of this technique is it is clearly giving us in which club which of the states are belonging. So the, 
and this is the relative transition path. So yeah, you can think it as a as an average growth uh, growth of each of the clubs. So it is uh, 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 we can clearly see that the average growth of each club is diverging from each other, right? So the richer clubs are diverging from the second, uh, which is the red line. Similarly, the all other clubs are diverging from each other. So clubs are diverging. Uh, <clears throat> to in, yeah. This one. Yeah, Bihar, Uttar Pradesh, I think. No, so, 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 uh, yeah, yeah, this is really interesting. Say, uh, uh, these states have started from so low a base, even a very, very big growth acceleration for a very short period of time is not sufficient to make them converge to the average growth rate. So they're growing. No, but 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 a single state can't do that, right? Right. This is the this is for the club as well. So you can you can see that for the period you were saying about it is from 2005 to 2010, right? So there is a there is a very very stable kind of path. So this is not declining very fast. So there was Bihar, then Uttar Pradesh. Uttar Pradesh was not having experienced a very similar kind of growth acceleration during that time. Right. Right. Okay. So again, for uh, to uh, for the robustness of the of the crop convergence test, again we applied this distribution dynamics method. You can see there are five clubs again here forming and. Uh, and uh, and this is a kind of evidence that okay the Phillips results are giving similar kind of results with distribution dynamics. So, uh, in order to uh, for, uh, capture the second kind of uh, unevenness, what we have done, we have applied this bipyramid test, and these are the results of the bipyramid test. I, I can give you a summary of that. So, applying this bipyramid test, we found total 87 potential breaks in the first step, but in the second step, just only 28 of them have been identified as significant. And in these 28 significant breaks, there are 20 up breaks and 8 down breaks. And we find that there is substantial variation in the number of significant breaks, up breaks and down breaks in different clubs, and both initial growth, uh, average growth rate and average growth rate are highest in club five and lowest in club five, uh, highest in class club five and lowest in uh, club one. And this suggests that rich states are not only rich in terms of per capita income level, but they are, uh, but they are experiencing much more rapid growth compared to the poor club states. Okay, then we move to the ordered probit regression. What we have done here, we have taken the left hand side variable. Uh, the, uh, 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 it is a categorical variable, and the categories are the number of uh, number of clubs. So here, w one thing is here we have taken four categories, and we have identified actually five categories because there was very low number of clubs in. Uh, uh, you can you can just see that uh, there was very low number of states in category uh, in club two and three, so we merge them because when we are running regression, so if we are not merging, the number of observations in those clubs will be very low. Uh, so, so now the left-hand side is coming from that uh, Philip Sul test, and it is a categorical variable, and the right-hand side variables are average initial growth rate, the number of upbreaks, the number of downbreaks, all these variables we are getting from the results of the bipyramid test. So what we are interested in here, just I'm, I'm, I'm giving a summary, say if average for any club, if average growth rate or average initial growth rate is increasing due to, uh, is, is, is impacting one state to move from one club to another club, or a lower, uh, or a state from a lower per capita income to a higher per capita income club, then we can say that okay, this in initial 
uh, average per capita ha income is having some impact on that, right? So now, what is the meaning of this average per capita income? So the average per capita income or the total average, if we, if we can assume that this, this can be changed by uh, very long-term institutional reforms. But, this, and these growth outbreaks, outbreaks are basically the growth accelerations, right? So now here, by the result of this, of this uh, regression, we try to justify that for some of the states, we need just only simple short of reform where we can just simply uh, make the growth rate to accelerate for some time, right? But for some other sort of state, we need some different kind of policy where we need to move the growth rate further, right? Or the average trend further. So now if we look at the results here, you, uh, in, the, in, the, in column two, we presented the result of, the, uh, of, of this ordered profit regression and column three to six are presenting the marginal effects. So in column two, shows that while the coefficient of average initial growth and the number of upbreaks are positive and significant, the coefficient of the number of downbreaks is insignificant, right? So, and again, if you, if you look at the marginal effects as well, then again, the number of downbreaks are all are insignificant, right? But in case of, in case of the, uh, the upbreaks and, and the average initial growth rate, all the coefficients are significant, right? So, so the marginal effect of club one suggests that if average initial growth increased by 1%, the probability of being in club one declined by 8%. You can see that, that uh, it is minus 0 0.08, right? Similarly, uh, similarly, if one more break occurs, in uh, the probability of being in club one is, is, is declined by 33%, right? But this is exactly opposite thing is happening in case of club three and four, right? So you can, you can just see that. So the sign of the average initial growth rate and the number of outbreaks for club three and four are positive, but these two, this club one and two are having exactly opposite of club three and four. So, the, uh, so interestingly, the lack of significance, this is very interesting, that lack of significance of the downbreak in the recreation implies that even the better performing states couldn't uh, uh, avoid having a downbreak, right? So, but what is the implication of that? So initially, say, when initially, and uh, sorry, I, I, I should have mentioned one thing very early that, okay, this is the data I have taken for the post-reform period only, right? So, so the initial average growth is actually capturing the initial reforms momentum. So initially, some reform has been made and implemented a momentum. Every country has got a, or every state has got a momentum. But after some time, some simple reforms in the Indian economy has been implemented during the year 2000 or to, in between 2000 and 2004. So some of the states received that momentum due to, due to the simple reforms. Now those states which already got the momentum due to the simple reforms, they need a deep institutional reform. Otherwise, it is very difficult to maintain that growth rate. But for, the, for other set of state, those who never got the growth momentum, like uh, very poor, uh, uh, the states in the poor club, like club one or two, so for them, the policy prescription is to initiate very simple reforms. And we have already seen that what happened when just a government change and very slight changes in the, in the institution or maybe without any change, deep uh, reform in the institution, Bihar has sparked the, the growth rate for some time, right? So 
there is a there is a very interesting literature it says that kick starting the growth is very easy but sustaining it is very difficult right so we are also getting similar kind of result in case of indian states so for some of the states especially belonging to uh, the poor clubs so for those states uh, our policy prescription is coming a very simple kind of reforms but for the some some of the richer states who have already received the momentum we are suggesting okay we need deep institutional reform in these states thank you so if there are any questions for debujit just one question uh so your entire conclusion is basically that certain states need even greater state intervention than they have at the moment uh which uh which the club one and two right they need but the if i'm not wrong isn't it that the greater the, st uh, the state intervention and control it's not supposed to have that higher growth unless it's being artificially generated by the state okay so uh uh, so, uh, so, uh, so the controls are different from reforms here, right? So reforms are you you can you can think of uh, 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 exactly opposite of the controls, right? So uh, reforms means we are we are saying we are relaxing some of the some of the things which are earlier tied with some institutional barrier or maybe some uh, government mechanism. So the, so here what what I'm saying is say. Say for example, when when Nitish Kumar came in Bihar in the in the year 2004 or five, I think. So during that time, what kind of things have changed? There was a clear message from the government that okay, uh, we are we are going to change the law and order condition. The, no big institutional reform has been initiated, right? But simple message that okay, no gundas can move freely, right? That has changed many things in the country, uh, in that state. So and 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 some of the infrastructural in, uh, investments like like uh, like building of roads and uh, construction that has changed, right? So so initially we we, we found a very strong growth uh, in 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 Bihar during that time. Tusharda. <laughs> two things to say one is related to your answer to her question and second is my question the first thing is what you said about Nidish Kumar was really nice to hear but that doesn't come out from your result okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I, I guess you are using data from uh, RBI budgetary analysis data right uh, no uh, this data is uh, CSO's uh, GSDB data uh, that's uh, almost the same with the RBI same, yeah, budgetary yeah, analysis almost, data, right? Almost, almost similar. Almost the same, okay. So, my impression about uh, this uh, interstate comparison analysis or, uh, was that, that they always use these 17 major states. Yeah. So, leaving aside the small states, you haven't done that. So no, I, have, I have taken all the states, 31, 31 uh, uh, states and the union territories. Yeah, the reason that most of the studies leave aside these small states is their output composition and also the, I mean, budgetary receipt compositions are very different from general category states. Exactly. So, I don't know if you want to put it in the context of other analysis that has been done for India. It might be a good idea you do the same thing only taking the 17 major states. Then you see the composition, at least the first club you have shown, all of the states except, uh, yeah, except I think one major state. The all other states are very, really small states. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So that's true. Any other question or comment? Yes, Shekhar. Sorry, uh, is this data like filtered or something or are you just using raw data here? Because my sense is uh, uh, some of the downturns can be uh, true for uh, the Indian economy as a whole. So maybe that's why you're not capturing anything because I would expect that something happens even on the downturn because that's where usually the action happens. So yeah. So fine. Uh, first of all, this is uh, this is uh, th these are the GDP data, which is uh, GSDP data, gross state domestic product data, and which are available 
from CSO and in different base years. So we have adjusted for the base year. This is the one thing that, have, that we have done, right? The second thing is the convention in, in GSD, uh, in, in growth literature, is to use the data as it is, because if there is, uh, and, and, and say, wait, so this problem can come, what you are saying, only in case of biperon structural test, when, where we are measuring the structural breaks, right? So one, uh, so the thing is, we have taken six years, so, so, the, so if it is business cycle, then we usually take it as four years, right? We have taken a, a larger period than four years to, uh, to, uh, to uh, as a minimum distance between two breaks, right? So even if between two breaks our business cycle is happening, it will not show in our result as a break. Right. So we are taking a larger period of that. So you can think of these breaks at the, at the medium, medium, medium run compared to the short run. So in, in some cases, because we, we were trying to study the dynamics of that. If, if we are applying the HP filter, then that dynamics will be, right? Cycles, right? No, but but when we are taking the six-year period or eight years period in when uh, actually not in this study, in another study where the length of the observation is more, the time series was more, so we were using eight years, right? So that is actually taking care of if there is a business cycle that will not come up or or impact in the in the result of biperon. So uh, this is a usual practice in macro macroeconomics as well. In whenever we are using this kind of biperon structural break, so in in macroeconomics we are extremely uh, you, we are using in different places this biperon kind of test, right? You know that. Any more questions? Otherwise, let us thank all the speakers of this session, and we'll continue the questions in in the discussion period. Thank you.